just say, as we get started, how great it is to have Alan here. today on getting grounded, back to basics. So in January, we spend this month looking at the basic principles of science of mind. Last week, we looked at science of mind's view of God. And basically, we were talking about how God is everywhere around us and within us. There is no separation in God and humanity. 
And so when we understand that there's no separation and that God is right here in the midst of us and in us as our very breath, and we take that with our message today, which is the power of thought, we marry those two ideas together, and what we find is something that really changes our life. When we recognize that God is not outside of us, not in heaven looking at us, judging us, but God is right here in the midst of us, living in us, as us, and through us. So when we have that view of spirit, then it's up to us to open ourselves, hearts and minds, to be able to share that with the world, to be able to do all we can. And that's how we're empowered to do what we can do. So this week, we're considering the power of thought here. Ernest Holmes says in the Science of Mind textbook, the first principle fundamental to the understanding of the operation of thought is that we are surrounded by an infinite intelligence. So that's what we talked about yes, last week. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> he goes on to say, we're surrounded by an infinite mind which reacts to our thought according to law. Now some people get tripped up with this, so I'll give you the cliff notes here about law. Spirit, we say, spirit, another word for God, is love and law, two sides of one coin. There is the love that is the infinite, the unconditional love, infinite possibilities for us. And then there's the law, spiritual law that works for everyone, no matter who you are or where you are. So the impersonal side of spirit or God is the law. It works for everyone. Ernest goes on here and he says, we comprehend the meaning of infinite intelligence in a small degree, but because we're spiritual beings, we do sense the presence of an intelligence which is beyond human comprehension. So we can't really comprehend the infinite, spirit, nature, the divine intelligence, but we can feel that presence. He says an intelligence which is great enough to encompass the past, to understand the present, and to be the father of the future. Our own intelligence is one of its activities, and it is of like nature to it, meaning our nature is the same nature as spirit or the divine. That infinite possibility, always creating, always with more to do, that's our nature as well. For we are creative in our nature. And when we tap into that and we allow our creativity to show in our lives, they become much richer, much fuller. The power of thought that I'm talking about here is the power of the law to respond to us, to respond to our thoughts. Now, for the scientists in the room, we have scientific laws. We have laws of nature here. Things like gravity, the law of polarity, the law of relativity, the law of velocity. These are scientific laws that we study and we know work. And they work for everyone the same. Not just for some people, they work for everyone. Well, like these, natural laws or scientific laws, we also have spiritual laws. And the spiritual laws work for everyone the same as well. So the law of attraction, the law of circulation, the law of reciprocity, the law of prosperity, the law of cause and effect are all spiritual laws and they work for everyone the same. 
It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what's your gender, what the color of your skin, what language you speak. These laws work for everyone, and they work all the time. Are you open to using those laws and learning how to use them to create more good and to create the life that you want? In the Bible, it talks about the rain falls on the just and the unjust, meaning that spirit provides for everyone. It doesn't judge, well, you're a good person, so I'm going to provide for you, and you're not so good, so I'm going to provide nothing for you. That's not the way spirit works. How it works is, here is the bounty of life spread before you. Infinite possibilities. What will you open your mind to? What will you collect from life? You see, we're the only ones that limit ourselves. We're the ones that say, oh, I don't think I'm good enough for that. Oh, God wouldn't want me to have that. That's too much. No, it's all available. Infinite possibilities, lots of potential there. Whatever we can dream, we can have. We just need to open ourselves to it and not block it from coming to our lives. You've heard people say, Oh, it was my great slide for spiritual laws. <laughs> you've heard people say, what you think about, you bring about. And if you've been around here, you've also heard people say, it's done as you believe. So whatever you're thinking is what you're going to produce. What you focus on is what you will manifest. So what's ever in your mind is what's going to show up in your life. Last week I talked about how things are always created twice. First in your mind, and then in physical form. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It's done as we believe. If you don't think you can accomplish something, you won't. But if you know you can, if you think you can, if you open yourself to that, then yes, you'll be able to accomplish it. Because you are one with the eternal, one with spirit that is all-powerful, that does not judge, that is not going to limit you. You see, the law that we're talking about, love and law as two sides of spirit, the law always says yes. Yes, no matter what you're saying. Oh, I want to be able to do this. And the law says, yes, you put it out there, and you keep putting it out there, you keep focusing on it, and it's going to show up in your life. If you put a limited thought out there, oh, there's no way I could do that. I'm not good enough. The law says, yes. <laughs> the same answer, yes. And you won't be able to do it because you don't believe in yourself. You don't have any faith that you can accomplish more. So it's up to us. Buddha said, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. And that's what we're talking about today, is our thoughts, the power of our thoughts, and how they create our life for us. That's what we'll become, is what we're focused on, what we're thinking about here. Ernest Holmes said, if you do not learn to control your thought, Thought will control you. Think about that. If you don't learn to control your thought, thought will control you. Have you ever started worrying about something? If you don't control that, if you don't change that, what happens? It takes over your life, doesn't it? That's all you can think about. So our thoughts are powerful. We need to learn to control our thoughts so that we can direct them in the way we want to go. Our thoughts are creative, and we talk about that a lot here. Now, I want to clear up something that several of you have come and talked to me about. When I say our thoughts are creative, 
And then something happens in your life, and you come and you say, well, did I create this? Not every thought creates a form. Hear me. Not every thought you have creates a form. Experts say that we have an average of 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of thoughts. And sometimes the way my mind goes, I would believe. 70,000 thoughts a day. But do we manifest 70,000 things in the day? No. Because we have some thoughts that don't really manifest. We, they float through our minds and we don't focus on them. So I'd like to give you a demonstration of this. I need a volunteer with a strong arm. <laughs> Renee. Oh. Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, come on. <laughs> Either one of you can be sorry. You know? <laughs> Would you hold this glass of water so people can see it? So my question, this is interactive time, how much does this glass and water weigh? Not much? What do you think? How much does this weigh? Three and a half ounces a pound? Three and a half ounces a pound? Six ounces? Six ounces? <laughs> I will share with you that the absolute weight of the glass and the water does not matter. What is going to depend is how long she's holding it. If Renee holds it for a minute, it's no problem. If she holds it for an hour, <laughs> she's going to have an ache in her arm. If she holds it for a day, her arm is going to become numb and paralyzed. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> in each case, the glass of water, the weight of the glass of water, doesn't really matter. It's the, how long you hold it, because the longer you hold it, the heavier it becomes. Understandable? Negative thoughts, stress, worry, are like this glass of water. Think about them for just a moment or two, and nothing happens. But think about them for a little longer, maybe an hour, and they begin to hurt a little bit. Think about the negative thought or the worry or stress all day, and it becomes much more of a burden, doesn't it? You'll feel like if you carry it for the whole day that you're paralyzed, you're incapacitated. And so I want to invite you when you have something that's negative, some worry, some fear, put the glass down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Remember to put the glass down so you're not carrying that and creating something that you don't want in your life. What we think about is going to manifest over time. So I want you to realize that, oh, there was my water. <laughs> I should have used that, but this real one that I was talking to Reverend Phil right before the service and stepped on the podium and the whole thing flipped over <laughs> and I got water all over my pants. So that's why my outfit isn't quite matching. <laughs> I had lovely gray pants on. <laughs> um, so we are co-creators with spirit for our lives. Where we're putting our focus is what we're creating in our life. And the only power that you really have is the power of your thought. Many of us try our best to try to control other people. It doesn't work too well. We need to learn to control our thoughts and control ourselves, not control others. I bet a lot of you were thinking when she held the glass up, I was going to ask, was it half full or half empty? <laughs> <laughs> it 
And you know, whatever perspective you have, that's what you're going to find in your life. If you're expecting to see lack and limitation, you'll find that in your life. If you're expecting to see more and good, then that's what's going to show up. Whatever we think is what we're going to see. We're creating our own life. Now, just like I said, you can't, every thought will not manifest. I want you to know not to believe everything you read, every thought that comes through. In doing my research for today's talk, I found this quote. If you're too open-minded, your brains will fall out. <laughs> I thought, well, that's interesting. I will guarantee you that you can be open-minded and your brains are not going to fall out. <laughs> you do want to be open-minded enough to learn to control your thoughts, and thereby you can expand your consciousness to a higher consciousness, a higher vibration, a higher frequency here. And that will make a difference. An illustration for you. This week in class, we were talking about prejudice. And I was reflecting on a conversation that I had with Reverend Alma, my teacher. Reverend Alma is an African-American woman, and I was in school doing research for a paper. And so I was talking to her about prejudice that she had come up against. Being an African-American woman and a female in the ministry for 40 years. And she shocked me because she said, well, I never faced any prejudice. Really? And I didn't believe her. I was like, okay, but that kind of ended our conversation for <laughs> the school project I was doing. But you know, as I have gotten to know her on a much deeper level and understand her consciousness, I understand that it was the power of her thought. She didn't expect to find prejudice. She walked into her ministry with a high consciousness, a high vibration, and she saw spirit, she saw God in every person, in every face she met. And so she didn't expect people not to accept her, to support her, to love her, because that was her consciousness. That was her mental equivalent, if you will, for life. People love me. People want to be around me. People want to support me. And now I see she operated from a higher consciousness than I was operating from. That's a goal, to be able to see the divine in every face, in every person, in every experience, and not find prejudice where others might be finding prejudice. Everything in physical form is a manifestation from our minds into what we call form or matter. Now, sometimes we get stuck in our conditions in life. And so at CSL Parker, we have practitioners here. The role of the practitioner is to know the truth of for you and to know that spiritual truth, that whatever your condition is, is not really the truth of you. It may be going on in your human life, in your physical life, but in your spiritual life, your real essence, there is so much more, and it is perfect, whole, and complete. And so a practitioner can help you re-guide your thoughts so that you can use the power of your thought to produce the effect you want in your life. Ernest Holmes talked about how people would come to him. They'd come to him for prayer, and they would say, Ernest, I have this on my arm, or on my leg, or on my foot. Would you, do you want to look at this? And Ernest would say, no, I don't want to see anybody's foot. <laughs> you see, he wasn't trying to be uncompassionate. He was trying to protect his mind so that he kept 
a spiritual thought for this person, that he knew that they were whole, perfect, and complete. He didn't need to see the physical condition. He didn't need to see their foot and the altar that was on it or whatever. He didn't want that picture in his mind. He wanted the spiritual picture that they are whole, perfect, and complete. And he would do his treatment for them from that perspective. I have known ministers that have said, I don't do hospital visits. Well, as a nurse, I thought that was pretty uncompassionate. But I understand what they're saying. They're not there to get into the physical condition of the person. And so there's a balance there to find in my life, I will say, for me, to be there with someone who is in the hospital, someone who needs support and love and caring, and also know their spiritual truth. And that's important. That's why our practitioners meet together with one another, to support each other so that we can continue to know the truth for one another. And they can help you do the same thing. They can help you move past whatever conditions are in your life. The power of thought is important. Just as Ernest didn't want to fill his mind with a negative image, with something less than perfection, we get to guard our minds so that we're careful about what we take in. I purposely don't watch TV very often. I certainly don't want to watch the news. Sometimes we'll turn it on to catch the weather if we think it's going to be snowing. <laughs> but I don't want to watch the news. Now I turn on my computer and I'll have headlines pop up. But for me, what works and serves me the best is rather than getting into the article and reading all of this negative stuff, I simply pray for the highest and best of all concerned. And I move on. And if something else pops up, for the highest and best of all concerned, that's my prayer, and I move on. I figure if the world's coming to an end, someone will tell me. <laughs> And it's really okay with me. So, for the highest and best of all concerned. We have some different wisdom thinkers that we read in our philosophy. And so I want to share a few of these with you. Emmett Fox says, What you think upon grows. Whatever you allow to occupy your mind will magnify in your life. Whether the subject of your thought is good or bad, the law works, and the condition grows. Any subject you keep out of your mind tends to diminish in life, because what you do not use atrophies. I thought that was an interesting perspective. Because if we're not thinking about something, it loses its power, doesn't it? And it doesn't control us. Wayne Dyer said, choose to avoid thoughts that weaken you, and you will know true wisdom. It's your choice. <laughs> and Emma Curtis Hopkins says, the spirit knows nothing of imperfection. The spirit shines through all your being with its clear, holy light. God is your life. And that's our power. And then Ernest Holmes, our founder, says, Life is a mirror, and will reflect back to the thinker what they think into it. So what are you thinking in life? What's occupying your mind, your time? Because that's what's going to be showing up in your life. That's the power of your thoughts. Are you learning to control your thoughts and direct them in the manner that you want to go? in the things you want to produce for your life. You see, that bounty of God, infinite possibilities, is laid out before us. It's available to anyone and everyone, no matter who you are, what your age is, it's available to you. If you can open your heart and your mind to it, you can achieve it. Are you willing to take that challenge? Are you willing to do, as Lisa sang, 
all you can. Do what you can in the place you are with what you have. Yes. Do what is yours to do. Raise the vibration of your life and the vibrational energy of the people around you through your interactions, through the expression of spirit that you are in the world. Do all you can. I'll close with this story. It's a story that talks about as the congregation filed into this little Catholic church in the plaza called Santa Rosa. There was a loud intake of breath. The statue of Jesus, which stood in the corner as usual, was there, but vandals had entered the chapel and broken off his hands. After mass, the priest organized a committee of parishioners to investigate the crime and to begin raising money to buy another statue. The following Sunday, as the congregation filed in for mass, there was another loud intake of breath. This time, there was a sign hanging around the statue's neck. It was carefully handcrafted, and it read, I have no hands but yours. I have no hands but yours. We are each expressions of spirit. Are we ready, willing, and able to take our thoughts, our minds, and use them to raise the vibration of the world, to create the peace, to create the joy, to create the love that we want to see in the world? It's our choice to do all we can in the place we are with what we have. That's your homework for this week. To recognize and realize that you are an expression of spirit and to figure out what you can do this week to raise the vibration of your life and the vibration of those around you. I know it'll be a great thought as you consider what you can do.